So welcome back to another episode. So now you've seen that this short block is all built up. This 2.3 litre short block for the 4G64 crank, ARP mains, H11 head studs, got CP pistons, I-beam manly rods. So if you haven't seen that, go back and have a look at the episodes. If you have seen that, now we're on to building up this head. So you can see I've already went over the uh, head and I've protected it. Let's get to stripping down this head. So first off, obviously we're gonna get these valves out. Um, you can see that we have um, titanium retainers in here uprated springs. There's uh, various ways we can get these valves out. It's basically choose your weapon. So I'm gonna show you a couple of the tools that I'm gonna use. Before I strip any engine or head down, I always check inside the ports. I just wanna see what's been going on in the engine while it's running. You can clearly see here, I know this engine hasn't done many miles since the head was rebuilt. You can see the stem seals are already started to leak. Not on that side, you can see that side. And then they're really with all of them. So I don't know what sort of stem seals they're using. So we'll check when that's out, but you can see they're not going to smoke that bad at the minute, but you can see they've started to leak already, which is not a good sign. So we're going to uh, take this out, take all these valves out now, strip down this head. It's basically about choosing your weapon. I'm going to show you different tools you can use. But the most popular tool that really is used for removing uh, valves from the head is this valve swing compressor tool. Now you can see that this one is the double hinge version. It's the best one you can get into all different places. You can get the single hinge version, normally for overhead valves. Um, but it doesn't do all the uh, engines. So that's the one I'm gonna be using to strip down this head. But also we've got this style as well. You might know this style if you've changed the valve stem seals with the head on, you can use this style design. It's a proper bodge as you can see from inside them ports in the head. Um, once they're leaking, the, the ports get clogged up. You can never clean them out anyway. So this is the uh, part that goes into the compressor. Basically, this fills up the spark plug. I'll quickly show you. So the way this one works is this is the airline that goes into the cylinder. Imagine the head is on, obviously, and then it goes in through the spark plug gap. This pressurizes the cylinder, pressurizes the chamber inside, and then it pushes against the valve so that you can push down on the back here, which is a special tool which I'll show you, and then you can push the uh, valve springs down and get these collets out without the valve falling into the chamber. Now, what I would normally do is get the piston up to top dead center before doing it anyway, because if you drop a valve into the cylinder and it drops all the way down and the piston's at bottom dead center, you're gonna end up having to take the head off anyway, because you're never gonna recover that valve. So I'm gonna show you me setting this up on an old Z20 let head I had laying about. Um, I'm gonna bolt it all together just so you can see exactly how it goes. It saves me doing it on the 4G63 head and having to take out the dowel pins. So you can see we've got the valve spring retainers in there and we're gonna get these collets out by using this tool. Now you won't ever see me using this tool on an engine, so that's a perfect example because as you know, I don't use this tool. I don't like doing it with the head on, but I have the tool anyway. Now obviously this bar can go at all different heights. You can see there's loads of different holes that you can go into. And then the same with this. So this obviously pushes against the valve spring, levers against there. So normally I'll put this into number two position here. That's what I found on the uh, Z20 let heads is the perfect place to be. All different heads are obviously gonna be different. So slot that in there, slot that pin in there. And then basically what you do, can see inside that spring, I'll show you a close up, and then you just lever against that bar, and that cracks off the spring. So you can see how easy that is, like that. Um, it's, there's nothing wrong with doing it this way when the head's off, you can see, but I won't do it with the head on because obviously I want to clean out the chambers and do it properly. So here's a bit of a closer up view for you of how it works. So obviously you've got to put your air compressor line into where the spark plug goes. So that would go in there, that would pressurize your cylinder, and then you connect this end to your air line. And then, this is how the uh, spring retainer removal is. You literally just put that in there like that. Camera's in the way, so that's awkward. You can see, all you do is push down on it, and you can see that releases the spring tension off the retainer, and then you can get in there, and you can remove your collets. Right, so we're gonna do another one here, quickly, just to show you. So basically, what I would do here is I'll just compress the spring like that, and then I'll just knock off the collet, especially if they've been on there for a long period of time. And then you just get in there with your magnetic tool, 
get the collets out and then you can lift the spring up that's the retainer and then the same thing get your magnet in there lift up your retainer get out your spring and that's it um, the only reason that this is easy work is because these valves are seized in here at the minute normally they'd want to push themselves through but you can see they're well wedged in there at the minute so you can just push them out the bottom in fact, you can see that they are proper jammed in there. So I'm going to tap them through. And there's one valve out. You can see how nasty that is. These ain't getting reused again. That's a quick demonstration of how to work this certain kind of valve tool. You also got the uh, different adapters here you can use for the airlines that obviously pressurize the combustion chamber so the valves don't drop in. If you've got different type of heads because obviously these are universal not vehicle specific but with heads like this with crazy high um, pressure springs this is my go-to choice of tool you can see it's a much much uh, fiddlier job to use but a much more simple job to stop valve damage so you can see just clamp off one side then it's just a simple case of pushing the lever you can see it then pushes down the valve spring and then you do the same thing again with the uh, collets. Now I'm going to show you there's two different types of collets. These are obviously a race valve so they've got a race single groove collet. I'm going to show you the difference and tell you why they're different. Now you just loosen that back off like that, get your spring compressor out of the way. And then you've got your titanium retainer, your valve spring and you can see that this valve will push out a lot easier than you just see that other one push out. And you can see that that's a mnemonic inconal exhaust valve designed to take silly amounts of heat. And you might be able to see there that it's a single groove as opposed to the triple groove, which I'll show you. When it comes to a race engine versus a road engine, things get a little bit different. So you can see here, we have two exhaust valves. Now ignore the length of them, because that means nothing. That's just the engine design at the minute. So this is an exhaust valve off of the uh, 4G63 head. This is the race mnemonic inconal exhaust valve. And this is the um, sodium filled exhaust valve on the Z20 LET, which is a very good exhaust valve. But we also have titanium retainers. Now you can see here, titanium is obviously made out of a much, much lighter material. So you compare the thickness as well between the cast steel and the titanium retainer. I know you can't feel it. I can't even feel that on my finger and you can definitely, definitely feel the weight of the cast. Now you've got to remember these are going up and down thousands and thousands of times a second. So the more weight you can remove off these valve train, the better. The better it's going to rev and the better the engine is going to perform. But that's not all. So when it comes to actually attaching the valve itself, you can clearly see in this valve on the Z20 LET engine, it has a free groove collet and it would do the same as well with the 4G63. You can see on the race valve, it's a single groove collet. This is the valve collet that come off of it. And you can see in there, it's got a triple groove, which means it's obviously got three grooves to hold on the valve. So you can see here, that is a single groove collet and that's a triple groove collet. Basically, uh, a race engine is not designed to be doing 100,000 miles. It's designed to make as much power as quickly as possible. And it's designed to be rebuilt after a very short period of time. But every component on this race engine will wear out far, far quicker than the OEM item, and that's the way it's been designed. So this titanium retainer, although being very, very light, it's never gonna be as strong as the steel one. It's gonna wear out quicker, the collets are gonna wear out quicker, the valve's gonna wear out quicker, and I'll tell you why that is. So on the um, triple collet valves, where it's got the triple groove, these valves are designed to spin inside the valve seat. Obviously, they don't do this, but they slowly rotate over thousands and thousands of revs so that they don't cause massive amounts of damage to the seat and the valve itself. Whereas the single groove collets, they de designed to lock them valves in place. So the valve seal is exactly the same as when you set them. But in turn, that's going to cause the valve to wear out a lot quicker because the valve hasn't got nowhere to return, nowhere to move to. So that's going to be smashing itself into the seat. And so it's obviously not going to do 100,000 miles. So that's the downsides and the upsides to race engines. So race engines are obviously designed to make power and OEM items are designed to last for thousands and thousands of miles. And that's why when you see people say they've forged their engine and now they've got a race engine, it's just not the case. There's so much that goes into a race engine like five angled valve seats, obviously lightened valve train, 
uprated springs so you've got really heavy duty springs in there so this kind of stuff is for your benefit rather than mine but whenever you're taking valves out so you make sure they go in exactly the right place because the valve seats are normally cut in depends if you're changing the valves or not and the uh, springs and retainers always label them up so you can see i just put the spring the retainer over the top of the valve i know that that one's number one exhaust and if they get knocked over get mixed up you know if they don't got no labels on them you're not gonna know where they go so just a little tip there so let's get to removing some of these uh, stem seals i've got a very uh, strong feeling that these ain't even oem ones they're pattern part ones i've got some uprated ones coming for them so let's pull these out got the proper pliers for them but most of the time these are next to useless so all i do is just uh, obviously clamp them over the top and then i'll twist them and that breaks the seal you can see it's spin now you better pull it off i've got to hold on to the head so i can't do this one-handed so there you go that one's off of the uh valve guide you can see that the valve guards looks like they've been replaced at some point so that's a good sign um and i was just looking at the stem seal and i can't see any oem mark on the top of it and these definitely ain't the super tech ones like the uprated ones that i've got coming that are made out of a different rubber that takes higher heat So these valve stem seals on the uh, 4G63 are a lot chunkier than the Z20 LET ones, so they're a lot easier to get off. You can see these are the OEM ones for the Z20 LET. You can see the size difference. They're uh, proper, proper chunky ones. So there we have one fully stripped down head. So you can see all the stem seals are now removed out of here. All I've got to remove now is the spring seats, which are still in there. You can see them probably moving around. There you go. So now I'm going to get to clean this head up, give it a proper deep clean get it looking nice and fresh and then what we're going to do is clean up the chambers on the back of the head and start lapping these valves in to get a nice fresh valve seat so i'm just in the process of cleaning up the valves now you can see how nicely they come up so i just want to show you the difference between an, a freshly cleaned up valve obviously this is the mnemonic in conal valves the exhaust valves and you can see here this is an uncleaned valve now look at the carbon build up look at the oil build up on the uh, stem itself um, and a cleaned up valve is just going to work so much more efficiently and then we, when we lap them in we're going to have a nice fresh seat now we only need to do a little lap in on these because these have been cut in by a machine not long ago but you can see clearly the difference between a clean valve and a nasty dirty valve so it's always worth taking the valves out giving them a proper clean up so this is the intake inlet valve now now you can see on the left we've got the dirty one full of carbon and on the right we've got a nicely cleaned one you can see on these inlet valves this is a stainless inlet valve and it's been nitrided for extra hardness now you can see they're black that's how you know they've been nitrided and uh, on there it's got the super tech mark now you can see obviously we give that a clean up and then we get all them clean and you can see the nice seat that's on the inside of them already just doing the final finishing now of the exhaust ports you can see these are mainly clean and then i'm just doing the final finish to get them nicely uh, cleaned up so that there's no exhaust gases or carbon build up and i've also done in the chambers as well just started to finish them cleaning them up you can see all the chambers and the ports and i've just got to do a little bit more work in here see there's a little bit of carbon still in here the inlet side's good and then we're finished and then we can start lapping in these valves so i'm just about to cut the valve seats back in i've started on this one already just give it a quick once over now you can see what we're looking for with a valve seat cut um, you can see it's like a matte finish all the way around unbroken you can see on the right side where the uh, seat is a little bit like not pitted but you know normally they do pit you have to go over them with a coarse grit first but these have been cutting not long ago so we're just going to go for the optimum seal so we've got the better compression now you can see all around the valve there where i've cut that in so you're looking for that gray line unbroken the whole way around the valve and that way you know that that valve is going to be seating on the valve seat so i'll get another 16 of these lapped in there see i've done the exhaust valve already just doing this nitrided inlet valve now whenever you do these just oil up the stems so i've got a little tub of oil there you've got to oil up this stem so that it doesn't get any damage from the valve guide you can see it slides up nicely and never get any of the grit on this stem either because it will cut into it and it will wear that valve guide out and you'll get valve movement so you know when these valves have been cut in properly because you get a noise change in the valve seat so you can see this side hasn't been cut in yet so if we put this side in you'll hear the noise so so you can hear that noise and then this one has been cut in properly now so you'll hear the noise of this one so you can clearly hear that there's a popping noise as opposed to like a metal on metal noise so that's uncut and this one's cut so you can clearly hear the noise change when they get cut in and valve is seating properly 
So that's uh, nine of the valves lapped in now. You can see eight on the inlet side, one on the exhaust side. We've got seven more to go. Anyone who knows this job knows that it takes a long, long time to do, but it's well worth it when you have a proper compression in the cylinder, the engine, and you know your valve is seating properly. And there we have it, all 16 valves now, all cut in, lapped in, so that the valve seat is perfect. So we're gonna have good compression against all cylinders now. So we're just gonna get these to building this back up now. Obviously you're gonna take all the valves back out and then do it one by one because you can't do it with all the valves in. Um, these are the stem seals we're gonna be using with this head. So obviously the whole valve train is Supertech. So we're just using Supertech stem seals as well. So you can see on the stem seals of the Supertech, the inlet ones are brand and the blue ones are exhaust. And the reason for that is they're both made out of Viton rubber, but these have an higher temperature additive put into them so they can take much higher temperatures than the standard ones can. So the head has all been steam cleaned, so it's nice and fresh now, not looking all oily and gunky like it was before. So we'll be able to have a nice fresh oil in there and it'll be golden rather than black. And um, you can see I've just put in one of the valve spring seats and I've just put in one of the uh, inlet stem seals as well. So we're just gonna get on with getting the rest of them seats and the, the stem seals in, and then we can start putting the valves back in springs in already we're just getting along with it now it's too difficult to film while I'm doing it so I'm not going to um, you've got the exhaust side there that the blue stem seals and then the obviously the brown ones at the back for the inlet sides and there we have it the finished product so that's one fully rebuilt head the surface all been polished and we've got a fresh rebuilt head now with titanium retainers uprated valve springs and we've got the Kelford cams to go on there the brand new lifters to go in as well so we've got mnemonic exhaust valves nitrided inlet valves one millimeter oversize on both with the Kelford 272 degree cams should make for an interesting setup so really the only extra thing that we could do to this head is obviously port the inlet and exhaust sides but as you can see the ports on these are very very large as standard this head will now take 700 horsepower with the oversized valves and everything. So we're good to go at the minute. If we want to go for more power, we're going to build a fresh head up in the future. So unfortunately, the head gasket hasn't come yet. Otherwise, we would get it attached to this block and we'd be able to bolt it back on, but we haven't got it yet. So I'm hoping everyone enjoyed this one. You know, it's a, it's a different build, you know, freshening up a head, especially a high spec head like this. And you can see how it was done. And hopefully you get out there and do it yourself. Not be afraid. If you need any info, you need any help, I'm always happy to help on my Instagram. I help a lot of people. Um, get over there, follow me on Instagram. If you want to drop me a message, if you've got any problems, I'll try to get back to you.